From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Should I stay or should I go now? Wake up! What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up Board Champ presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, talking about what the coaches were talking about. Sam McCall, is he staying? Is he leaving? Deuce Span, growth. And the hoop season has started off. Welcome on into Wake Up Board Champ presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. CPTallyBar.com, that is the website. You can always pull out your phone, camera, app, that QR code on your screen, wherever it is, and then it takes you right to the website. And you can check out the daily lunch specials. But it's Tuesday, so you already know. It is Taco Tuesday, beef, chicken, tacos, all day on special at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, as well as trivia. Corey Clark's uh, real strength in this life. Well, shoot, I mean, he's got so many he's got so many tools in the toolbox, Corey Clark, just one of them. He won't be there, so take advantage of it. Maybe you can actually win with his uh, absence this Tuesday, but he wished he could be there. How are you, Corey? I'm good, man. It's also Stephanie's birthday. Oh, so, uh, really? Wish her the big 3-0. She nice. finally made it, so wish her a happy birthday. Uh, she made it to the big 3-0. Uh, hopefully she gets at least 30 more. Absolutely. So God, God bless her, and happy birthday to all of you celebrating birthdays on uh, November 8th. What'd you get her? Or like, where, where are you guys at in terms of, like, you just do so much awesome stuff for her throughout the year. Do you, you guys do big gifts, not big gifts? What's well, the... she's much better at giving gifts than I am. I'm I'm awful at it. Uh, my gift to her, Aslan, quite frankly, were those chicken wings on the drive back from <sighs> Miami after the game. <sighs> yeah. Remember how she was at lunch before the game? Like, those are, you're going to order chicken wings and not eat them until after the game, like eight hours? You're going to have them in the car? I'm like, yeah, they're chicken wings. Thanks. I'm going to do it. And I ate seven of them. She ate the other three. Nice. Like I knew she would. I knew she. Once you smell them and you see me eating them, you're like, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna have. And on top of that, she ate the celery with the blue cheese, which had been in the car for eight hours. So explain that the scientist how, how the scientist gets that wrong. Like I'm like, you're not gonna eat that blue cheese, are you? She's like, ah, oh, it's fine. Well, so, blue cheese, anyway, blue cheese is already moldy, so you can't really get. Any I guess worse that's true. It can't get worse. It just seems like it wouldn't be great sitting in the Miami sun and and just in a hot car for eight hours. But hey. It worked. She ate it. She's still alive. We ain't wrong. A reminder. But no, I, she's very good at giving gifts. I am not. Um, so I have to still, I hope she, she won't listen to this. I have to still figure something out. I think I'm going to go the flower route. Mm. Yeah, like a nice bouquet, like a big old bouquet of flowers. But she she's good at like not spending a lot of money on gifts as much as like very thoughtful um, gifts that I need or are just thoughtful about my life in general and something that nostalgia for my dad or my son. She's really good at about those gifts. You still have that quilt she sewed you the other year? Oh, buddy, yeah. We, we I use it all the time. Okay. We'll I mean, I, I, I cover up with it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get down to it. Maybe not the longest of shows here for your Tuesday program, but we're out here grinding for you working. We'll have a basketball wrap-up later on here in the program, but Mondays are when we speak to Mike Norvell and the entire coaching staff. That was a pretty good presser out of Mike. I think, I think yeah. Mike is... Mike is. Having, I feel like Mike feels the need to kind of. He's got stuff to prove when he gets to the podium on Monday. It's like, nah, man, we're just gonna ask you a couple questions. You can just answer them, and we'll be on our way. Uh, you asked him about Sam McCall, which on Monday morning, shout out to our own intrepid Ira Schofel, who was walking into the Moore Center by a football player that was like, "What? Sam's leaving?" And then Ira's news antenna is like, "Beep beep 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 yeah. beep beep beep." beep starts looking around and Sam McCall at you know like 1050 in the morning tweets out a graphic dear FSU family first I would like to thank FSU or Florida State University rather for giving me the opportunity to be part of their program and for supporting me on my journey this past year with that being said I would like to announce that I will not be a Florida State Seminole next season and will be entering the transfer portal shortly thereafter maybe about an hour or so after that I could actually pull up the entire uh, timestamp which I'll do right now at 1124 in the morning so you know, about 30 minutes later, he tweets, the post I made this morning was off emotionally. Or off yeah. emotions, I guess. Yeah, he meant to say off emotions, yeah. And then not too long after that, he follows up with another tweet, 11.27 a.m., hashtag go Knowles. So all of you that were like, ah, hit the curb, we don't want people that don't want to be here. Chill, chill. Let it all work out. Uh, I thought Mike Norvell and Adam Fuller were – Maybe not. I, I like Fuller's answer more. Maybe it's because I asked him the question. But I mm. thought Fuller's a little bit more illuminating in terms of how 
how sort of complex these relationships are in this day and age. But Mike Norville also was very sympathetic to what it's like to be an 18, 19 year old right now in this day and age. What do you take away from that sort of exchange, Corey? Yeah, and then uh, it should be pointed out that McCall deleted whatever that post was. Was it an Instagram post, Instagram yes. story? Who knows? Instagram story. Um, like four or five minutes after he sent it out, and it, it, man, I get it. He's nineteen. He's eighteen or nineteen. He's he's used to being awesome. He's not used to sitting on the bench and watching other people play and win games. It's a very frustrating time. I remember hearing stories about Dalvin being frustrated his freshman year when he wasn't getting on the field inexplicably, as it turned out. He this is not inexplicable that Sam McCall's not playing. It was pretty inexplicable that Dalvin wasn't but either way he got on the field he had his he had his moments and he had a great career um that the reason I asked Norvell I asked him like how does he control his emotions with something like that not because he would be sad I would be irate I and I get it man I and, and that's why I can't coach that's probably why I can't I I'm maybe not a great sports dad with Brady I I just I I, I would be irate that after the biggest win for the program in a long long while a huge win. Um, you wait 36 hours to announce you're leaving. You couldn't wait three more weeks. Who quits on like, their day off? Monday's a day yeah, off. Yeah, right. Like players. clerks. Yeah, it's his day off. What are they not even practicing? What is he doing? What could have happened on his day off that made him want to leave? Um, so that was that was very. Uh, yeah, that that's where I would have a hard time as a coach. And I'm an older guy, so I I don't relate to what these players and these kids go through and I say that my son is four years younger than him so they're much more peer in the peer group than I am with Sam McCall um, so Brady probably understands it completely like yeah you're used to something happening in your life that you don't like and posting about it yeah. sometimes to get a reaction sometimes because it's true sometimes you might want attention no no please don't leave or no no I, I you know I, I do love you I do want to marry you like whatever you whatever did, the context is did you have AOL it, instant messenger Corey we had AOL instant messenger in college and we would leave really passive aggressive away messages at night about like girls or stuff that was going on in our lives mm, so we had mm, a little bit of that taste old of it, school so, yeah. that's like being in the wild west that's the pioneer days yeah, right. that's the pioneer days in yeah. Facebook like what Corey is up to this yeah, yeah. I remember all those days but yeah. I don't think I had AOL and no, I didn't leave a po. I didn't leave like uh, you know my, where, what I was feeling at the time. If okay. I did have uh, yeah. AOL and some, it was AIM, right? It wasn't that. Yeah, wasn't, yeah I think I, yeah, I think I had yeah. that for a little bit. But so that would have been pr very problematic for me. It's like really, Sam, really, it's all about you, right, bud? Like we can't just celebrate this win. We can't just celebrate that we're six and three and just beat our arch rivals by forty-two points. Now I got to answer questions about you. 36 hours later, freshman DB that doesn't play. You know why you don't play? You're not as good as the guys we got right now, but you will get there because you have a lot of potential. That's where my that's where I would have been. Probably, maybe not even that polite. There might have been some F-bombs in there. I don't know how Norvell handled it away from the cameras. Um, but he and Fuller, like you said, both handled it, I guess, the way you got to handle it now. Like, look, it's emotional. People make emotional decisions. Um, I was there once, too. We just try to sit down and educate them and show them the picture of where we see them going. Clearly, they're a freshman. Everybody wants to play. And then he pointed to the receivers. Like, all those receivers want to catch passes. Micah Pittman was playing against the coach that he left, the coach that wouldn't use him the way he wanted to be used. Micah Pittman didn't have a ball thrown at him. He was still out there blocking people and knocking people on the ground. Um, so he still took joy in it. Even, But uh, you know what I mean? Like, there's... There's team stuff and there's individual stuff, and I think that's maybe the lesson they're trying to teach Sam and maybe some other guys is, um, you know, your time will come, but you're a part of a team right now. and it, it Embrace what's going on here and try to get better and don't maybe take the focus off the team right now to make it about, oh, is our third-string cornerback leaving? Oh, no. Our, our big, and look, Sam McCall might be awesome. I'm not dismissing what he could be, but right now he's not really an impact player. He doesn't have a... So is it, why, 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 why put it out there just to get attention from the coaches to, to have your teammates say, man, no, no, Sam's not leaving. Like what, what's the point? And this isn't just Sam McCall specific. This is happening. A Notre Dame receiver after just beating Clemson announced he's going in the portal. I don't understand why you're going in the portal in November. What is the point? Wait it out for three weeks and then go in the portal, right? Go as soon as the clock hits zero after Florida. Run into the locker room if you want and get on the portal and announce it. That's fine. I don't understand why you would do it with three games left to go. But I'm an old guy. I get it. Well, as he said, it was done 
emotionally. You know, it was just one of these things. Yeah, where- it's but that's a lesson, right? Like, yeah. and look, he might end up leaving, but that is a lesson to like as, as what's his uh they are Herm Edwards used don't hit send. Yep. Like you might be thinking it. You might be texting with your with with your with your family. You might be texting with your friends and saying, "I'm leaving here. I'm out of here. I got it." Don't hit send. Don't make it public. There's no reason right now. And this is a good lesson learned, man. How long? How long was that post up? We'd say five minutes. Yeah. About. He heard about it instantly, and then he had to go back and and t- tweet hashtag Go Knowles thirty minutes later. That's the life of a nineteen year old, man. That's the life of a nineteen year old on social media. We'll keep an eye out there later this morning as we will attend practice on Tuesday, see what's going on with Sam and the rest of the Knowles. A reminder, tomorrow we will be live Wednesday uh, on Wake Up War Chant. That'll be your live program. That's your Thursday show, and then we'll do Renegade Express uh, for you folks on Friday. Just letting you know. Hit the thumbs up. We certainly would appreciate it. Subscribe. Might be pivoting on that, Aslan. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe maybe pushing it to Thursday because I'm actually, I think I'm going to be in town on Wednesday, so I'm going to be driving up after practice and i'm just not convinced i can get to my house in time because of atlanta traffic that's all we can still plan for wednesday but thursday i know i'll be able to be in front of a computer at 6 p.m what do you think a little production uh, meeting here it's, i like wednesday man it just works better you know all right well, hey well i'll try i'll try my best i want you to hurt yourself man yeah no we'll, we'll figure it out we'll keep you guys on your toes Let's keep mm. stay connected subscribe to everything follow everything Check everything that's got warchant.com and you'll know right. what's going on up to the minute. Oh, what are your thoughts about the Deuce Span sort of situation? And I'm not trying to be dramatic or anything. I mean, it was a situation. Guy got upset in the middle of a game. Coach got in his face about it. They worked it out. Um, this is – this is uh, you and Norvell, I think, are just cut from the same cloth. I, I felt like that could have been maybe like a 15-second answer. Hey, man, you know, here's the moment. Deuce messed up. We got on him about it. Uh, didn't like the way he responded, but just, hey, you know, we work through these sort of things as a coaching staff, and he's a young guy, and we really like him, and, you know, we know we can rely on him later on the season. He apologized later on, and, you know, it's water under the bridge. It's one of those things, emotion get the best of us, and we can't let that happen to us. Hmm. But he goes on for like three minutes about how, you know, this is just a – he loves Deuce. Deuce is in the plans. You got to, you got to, you know, you can't hurt the team, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, what what about that sort of exchange? I mean, I know you were at the stadium watching the game, uh, but we saw it on the TV that was being replayed up there as well. He comes back out the next series, and I, I think Norvell kind of admitted that maybe they did call his number the next uh, time around, and he delivered. So that that's always a good sign. They yeah, bounce you know, back I, fast. You know, I, I thought it, it the way Norvell was talking is like I, I don't know what Deuce what what the opponent did to Deuce to make him so mad that he got a personal foul. I don't I didn't see the play. I don't know if they ever replayed what happened. It was thirty eight to three at the time, so the producer probably didn't care. Um, so they weren't going back. But he got he got. I mean it was a, it was a um, you know pretty compelling television to watch the head coach of a team that's winning thirty eight to three getting on to his reserve receiver about a play that yeah cost him. What did it cost him? It cost them 52 points instead of 45 points, maybe, because they had to punt after that, after that personal foul. But the way, because when you look at Norvell and you watch the, watched him on the sidelines talking to Deuce, it wasn't Brian Kelly losing his mind or, uh, you know, name someone, any other coaches that lose their mind and just scream at their players. Jimbo. Well, there you go, that guy. Um, he, he was yelling, he was mad, but he wasn't yelling, you're an idiot. What the, Flip, are you doing? You to, he, he's basically telling him, you're too good for that. That's not you. We don't do that. Like, he he was talking so much about what the response was. About, like, yeah, man, I get it. Maybe he spit on you. Maybe he called you a name. Maybe he was just way too aggressive after the whistle. Your response is what you can control. And don't, basically, don't let that dude get you. Don't let that dude bait you into that. You've got to be better than that. And I think it was a... You know, I don't think he does that lightly. I don't think that, you know, he said he didn't know the cameras were on him, and he, I'm sure he didn't. Yeah. But he also knows he's on the sideline in front of thousands of Florida State fans in a game he's winning by 35 points. He knows people are watching. And he took that time to make a, to, to teach a lesson to Deuce, but also to kind of make a statement about who he is. Like, even in those moments when you're up by 35 points, he doesn't take, he doesn't, he doesn't appreciate that and he doesn't condone it. And not because he thought Deuce is a, is a dumb kid or did something stupid. It's because he let the other guy win. And so that's it's a great lesson to teach when you're up by 35 points. And he kept telling him, breathe. 
You know, he looked into his eyes and said, breathe, breathe. Don't, you know, basically don't do that again. That's not who you are. Don't let, you can control you. You control your own actions. Don't blame somebody else. Because I think that's what happened is Deuce came to the sideline and said, oh, he did this, he did that. And that's what Norvell absolutely did not want to hear. It doesn't matter what he did. He didn't do it. He didn't, he didn't make you respond the way you did. And so again, yeah, I thought that was, uh, I, I thought that was an interesting, um, I wrote about it actually. It's on the website. I kind of oh. tied the Deuce span and the, uh, and the McCall thing together, just like, what it's like to coach now, um, having to coach, you know, players that, you know, manage a roster, number one, but also just coaching players that are in the limelight, you know, whether it's tweeting out stuff for the world to see or ABC cameras catching it, but you're always coaching for the future. He wants Sam McCall to be here in two years. He wants Deuce Span to be here in two years. Those were not great moments, 36 hours apart for those guys, but he's trying to, he's hoping this is like the, what you look back on when you're writing the the Sam McCall first round pick story, you're writing about him going on social media and saying he was transferring, and then the the um, the turnaround that happened. Same thing with Deuce, like getting embarrassed on national television by his coach yelling at him, and then two years later he's going to be an NFL draft pick. Like those are those are cool stories, and Norvell certainly thinks both these guys have potential to get there, so he's trying to teach them lessons. I don't know if he does it with. I don't know, man. Name a walk on. I won't even. Want, I don't even want to go down that. I'm not going to yeah. even name a, a player a walk on. But he, I really do think with Deuce, especially, he thinks that guy has some stuff to him and and wants to get the best out of him. You know sports, and you pick winners all the time. So when I get paid for them at my bookie, mybookie.ag has the biggest online selection of odds and contests for all your sports betting needs anytime, anywhere. You can bet on the NFL, college football, which we all love, and take advantage of money bag. The MyBook Money Bag is a one-of-a-kind opportunity to spin for crazy odds on props and futures. Just place a bet, spin the wheel, and get ready to score epic odds on the best teams, athletes, and events. Sign up free today over at MyBookie.ag and use that promo code WARCHAMP. Claim a deposit instantly, dollar for dollar, of any amount, up to $1,000. Again, that promo code is WARCHAMP to claim your deposit bonus and give yourself a competitive edge. It's not just a sports book. It's, it's community, Corey. It's community mm. over at yeah. my bookie right now the florida state seminoles are six and a half point favorites over syracuse over on my bookie over under 51 and a half sneaky sneak sneaky sneak i think yeah i think they went under they went under last week because miami didn't bring an offense to the show so that's right florida state did their part yeah so check it out mybookie.ag use that promo code warchant I felt like you kind of maybe agreed earlier on, Corey, and I interrupted you in, in terms of the, the tenor or maybe the, the overall sort of feel of Mike Norvell's interview or press conference on Monday just seemed to be a, a more, I don't know if he's relaxed, but just, I've always felt like when he goes there on the podium and he just, he kind of goes into a different gear, a different part of his personality. And I feel like he's always, always trying to kind of prove, explain things and, and show yeah. the big picture and explain these things. Maybe now that you're starting to build some equity here, you have some big wins this season, especially the way you dismantled Miami. You know, maybe maybe he's also growing a little bit more comfortable. Uh, not that he's been uncomfortable, but you know, he's he's coaching the way he's going to coach always. Uh, but anything strike you about maybe just the way he handled Monday's press conference, or was that me just being weird again? Uh, no, I, I probably just you being weird again. Okay. I seem like the normal Norvell to me. Uh, pretty loud, um, pretty excitable uh, when he when he walks in the room. Um, yeah, just kind of the you know, kind of kind of chumming around with us before the cameras go on. Just the, just seemed like the the normal Norvell to me. I was thinking about that though because his opening statement was you know it wasn't Dabo long, but it was probably three or four minutes. And then one of the questions, and maybe it was the McCall question, but it was more than that. There were multiple questions where he might answer for three minutes. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I was like, and look, man, I get it. The hypocrisy of me complaining about a long answer, I understand. But uh, I got, you know, I kind of get paid to talk a long time. Norvell's paid to go win games. I think what, what hurts or helps, I mean, some people might love those answers, is he gets a lot of big picture questions. He doesn't get a lot of specific like, hey, man, why is Jamie Robinson so good? It's a lot of, can you kind of talk about where you guys were a year ago to where you are now? Or why is the offense able to be so balanced uh, running and passing? And is that the plan you had all along? And so he'll always go into like a big picture macro view of the program and what they're trying to build. And then it'll dovetail into, you know, the players they're trying to recruit and all. You know what I mean? Like I, I think part of it is just our questions. Because 
I think now, maybe right now, after after this week, if they go and beat Syracuse and they're seven and three, I think we're kind of done with that. I think we're done with big picture questions, like our our comparison questions or how much you've grown questions. I think we're now covering a top 20 football team and we're going to ask questions specific to the upcoming game or the rest of the season. Well, right? maybe not next time because we've got well, Louisiana. That's the thing, hey, man. There's not a lot of compelling, you know, if it's not Miami, Clemson, or Florida around these parts, we're not all that, you know, hey, what's, uh, what's their defensive front line, Coach? You know, huh? Not his fault. That's just the way it is in this conference. Yeah, Person yeah, that speaking. doesn't help. You're right, that doesn't help, especially when you're building something, and it's not like anybody. I mean, no, not one person listening to this show can name more than six Syracuse players. Right. You might not be able to name two. Um, it's just that's the nature of life in this conference, man. You just that no, no games except for Clemson and Miami are really compelling. Wake, but only because they keep beating you. It's not like it, it, those are games of the century type thing. So I think it lends itself to so solely focused on his program and his team. Uh, but again, I think we're now to a point where you don't get lauded for being good or being better like that. We That's expected and that's been proven now. So now it's going to be more specific to, again, maybe the Florida game, the bowl game, but then going into next year. I think it's more about that specific team, and I think we'll get hopefully more specific answers and not the, uh, I don't know, they're like philosophical. It's a lot of philosophical answers um, and not a lot of specific answers, but I'm not blaming him because he gets asked a lot of philosophical questions. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We usually bury this guy in our Tuesday shows, not like the, the bad Barry, like, oh, you're the worst, but just we don't talk about him all that much. But John Papuchas, special teams Ooh. coordinator, defensive ends coach, um, Guys, go watch the video. Go watch it. Please go watch it. Go watch. John Papuchas is an entertaining dude. He's insightful. He gives really good answers. And none of y'all watch the video. Doesn't make any I, sense. Watch it. It does, man. I, I, it doesn't make any sense. It's like yeah, you, me and Aslan could be, I don't I know what we could be doing, man, playing pickleball. And y'all would watch that more than y'all watch John Papuchas. And that just doesn't make sense. He's a really insightful coach. He's a funny, he's a pretty good guy. A uh, pretty funny guy, I meant to say. Um, I'm sure he's a great guy. Uh, saying somebody's a pretty good guy makes it sound like I know some stuff. Like, what does he know about JP that he's not going to just call him a good guy, but he's a pretty good guy? It's what you tell, it's the kind of thing you say about your friend that you've seen him do some awful things when he's drunk. <laughs> yeah, pretty good dude. Um, so yeah, no, Papuchas gives, they're good interviews, he's, especially this one. I thought this one was pretty detailed. He got asked a lot of different questions. So yeah, go watch that. How impressed were you that he remembered and, uh, I don't want to say recited, but he remembered and, and, and cited the Marvin Jones hit when he was asked about the Jamie Robinson play that really yeah. kept Miami out of the end zone once and for all in that ball game when he ragdolled him. Some people call him the ragdoll, the rock. Uh, the fact they talk about that was going to be in Florida State Miami lore for years to come. Whenever they talk about this game, they show highlights for Florida State. That's going to be one of them. It's up there with Marvin Jones. I was like, wow, look at JP. Yeah, somebody brushing up on his nolfan dot org. Hey, I'd uh, like him to understand that Florida State lost that game. Okay, the Marvin Jones hit. Yeah. Just that's something he needs to know moving forward. Uh, but yeah, yeah man, well, no, that was about a, that one. I mean, what, what, what we about Nigel Branham? Should he no, I thought he said the way he phrased it was like it's like that Marvin Jones hit and what that meant to that game. Oh, okay. It's like yeah, man, they lost, um, and Vanover got killed by Barrow just as bad as Marvin killed uh, that running back. Uh, but yeah, great game. I remember it. I was a teenager. It was a pretty pretty awful uh, pretty awful walk out of that stadium. It's what it is. We live that life. We live that life, folks, don't we? But, yeah, man, I thought that was cool that he mentioned Marvin Jones. And both he and Norvell talked about that Jamie Robinson tackle, like it's going down in the annals, yeah. um, which it, it could, man. It was a really impressive, just kind of such a dismissive, just you're not any good. I'm a grown man. You're a child. I'm going to throw you down like one. Yeah. Even though that kid's a big kid, uh, Jamie's just different. Um, so, yeah, no, that was – but he also talked about Jared Verse. He joked about hopefully getting to coach him more yeah. after what do, this season, How do we think funny. that – was that joke like 55-45, he's coming back? 55-45, he's not coming back. No, I think it was like he knows that Jared Verse has a decision to make. Um, he's not going to pretend that he doesn't. Um, but it, so he was he basically saying, yeah, it would be nice to coach him some more. Yeah. Not like I know that he's coming back or I know he's not coming back. Just like he knows that the NFL is calling for that kid either this year or next year. Um, talked about the punts, the punt catching. Um, I don't think he was even asked about Fitz. Where are we now? I don't even think you got a question about the kicker. I know. That was one of the over-unders. Was, was what over-under uh, 
Brian Fitzgerald longest attempted field goal. Not even like which one he's going to make, but like the longest attempt. And it was 37 and a half. And I think most people put under. And it was 41, right? Crushed it. Crushed it. Nailed that thing, man. Nailed that thing. He made a kick in the Miami-Florida State game. That's got to do worlds. I think he made uh, at least one. He made two last year. You know, thinking about it, he made a pretty big one in that game last year. You remember they were down by eight. Mm -hmm. They get the ball. They get inside the 25-yard line or so. And then on fourth and four, fourth and seven. And Norvell had been doing a lot of strange things on fourth downs. But even only down one score, he decided to kick it to cut it to five and then they had to go get the stop and they did thanks to Jermaine Johnson running down the kid from behind and then they go and win the game that was a big kick that Fitzgerald made they kind of got lost in the shuffle because of uh you know the Chicago Douglas and Andrew Parchment but yeah good on Fitz that's four in a row baby anything from Alex or Adam offensive defensive coordinators stood out yeah to you? yeah I thought you know um Atkins talking about uh you know, the way Trey Benson shouted out Dylan Gibbons for, mm-hmm. for, and just the way that Trey Benson shouted out the whole offensive line, the way the offensive line played, he said Dylan Gibbons did play well. He challenged him because he knew they were going to be running a bunch of counter, which means Gibbons is moving a lot. Um, and, you know, obviously Gibbons played really, really well. I think he was the ACC offensive lineman of the week. Um, Benson was the ACC back of the week with good reason. They both were, were very good. And just, you know, I, I, it's weird, man. It's like I, I, I could listen to Atkins all day. He just, he's no nonsense. There's not a lot of philosophical with him. No. If you ask no. him a question, he gives no. you a three sentence answer. But they are, the, the words matter, and they mean something. I, 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 I just think that um, he's he's very astute. He's clearly very good at his job. Very bright. He's a good communicator, and it's uh, it's cool to listen to him talk about. Uh, either any of it really man you know the wide receivers blocking the what the o linemen are doing the, uh, or the way jordan travis is playing and you know basically at the end he's like look man it because he was talking about the counters and all the counters they ran i think cristobal said or kevin Steele said they ran out of 70 70 plays that florida state ran 32 were counters uh which is a lot um atkins was like yeah man it's not the play calling though it's the players um, they got, you know, basically like he, he keeps wanting to put the shine back on the players because of how far they've come and how good they are now. And it is a good offense. Uh, but he also said, I thought it was really interesting. And this is something you don't think about when you're not a football player and you're not an offensive lineman. He said, look, man, they, you know, he's talking about the jobs they have on a particular play. And he's like, it's one thing to be aligned right and to know your assignment. Great. Now what? It's not like he goes, we're not going to give you three pluses if you know your assignment, you're aligned correctly, but you don't push somebody out of the way. Like once you know what you're supposed to do, it's not just good enough to be where you're supposed to be. Make a difference. Make an impact. Push somebody out of the way. Because so much you think about grading offensive linemen is just, you know, not messing up, knowing who you're supposed to block. Yeah, that's great. But what else are you doing? Are you actually making holes? Or are you just standing there dancing with someone? And, I, and he, the way he talks about offensive linemen, I, I just could listen to it all day. All day, man. I just love talking to that guy. And then the youth on the defense starting to kind of really emerge for Adam Fuller. Zaria Thomas's play. He likes the depth they have. I remember when we were watching the game live, we were wondering, you know, that moment when the Jordan threw the interception and Miami had gotten the ball deep in their own territory. Miami's territory, that is. They're like, man, you, know, this, you can really put the clamps down on them here if you bring out your number one unit. You know, if you, if you, if you throw the kitchen sink at them, if you throw Jared Verse and Fabian Lovett, but they didn't. Uh, and Adam Floyd was like, yeah, man, we just we kind of have our, our, our substitutions thought of, and we, we go ahead and we, we let them rip. And, uh, you know, they, they, maybe that kept them fresher later on the game where they were still able to keep them out of the end zone. Anything from Adam Fuller that uh, stood out to you out there, Corey? Yeah, he talked about uh, Greedy Vance and how he's coming along and that he played. That's a play. That's a coverage they run a lot. Um, I don't see it a lot. Maybe we don't see it because nobody throws that way, but just coming off the receiver, it looks like you have to then dart to the side of another route is not something I've seen the nickel guy do a ton. I don't see Kevin Knowles do that a lot, but uh, you know, Fuller said they, they do that a good bit and that they thought once they got him down inside their own five yard line, there was a set of plays they would run and they had gone over it and they expected some certain looks and uh, yeah, man, they were just, Clearly, like I said yesterday, they were, they were very well coached for that game. Um, you know, Fuller talking about, I thought, like you said, I thought he was good about McCall and trying to get these guys. You know, he said his quote was, some of these guys, when they're being recruited, can tweet one thing and get more attention for that one tweet 
than any of us will get in our entire lives. Mm -hmm. He goes, think about being an 18 year old kid and dealing with that. Like one tweet, one social media post can garner more attention from millions of adults than the rest of us will ever come close to getting. And you know, that's what you deal with in recruiting. That's what you deal with when you're dealing with four and five star athletes is, is, um, you know, that kind of, I won't say off the field, but yeah, off the field, just the stuff that isn't on the practice field that you still have to, you have to deal with because that's 2022. So he also said, I thought it was interesting too. Like they do have a plan. Like, yes, they want, they, they don't want Lovett and Cooper on the field the whole time. They don't want verse on the field the whole time. So that second series or that third series, it's already planned that the other, the other guys will come in. The other defensive linemen will come in or the other linebackers will come in, whatever. But the, the game, they got so many three and outs that, it looked, I mean, I think those backups got as many reps as the starters. Maybe more. Like I said, I, Fabian and Jared Verse played 26 snaps each. There's no way they thought going into that game that Jared Verse would play 26 snaps. But there was no need. Number one, he didn't play in the fourth quarter, not much anyway. But also, um, the, they kept getting off the field. I don't know uh, how many plays did my run, 50? 53, they, there's no way you go into a game expecting them to run that few of plays. So they were trying to keep them fresh for the end of the game. It just ended up not mattering. All right, everything else you need to know around the world of Florida State Athletics in under like three minutes. I'm running hurry up, no huddle. Corey, go home. Not too shabby for Brian Penske and the Lady Soccer Program. Florida State, the number one overall seed in the upcoming NCAA Women's National Soccer Tournament. Florida State will take on Florida Gulf Coast 5 p.m. on Friday. Again, first year taking over from, let's be honest, a legend of Mark Rikorian. Uh, Brian Penske got the Lady Seminoles, the number one overall seed in the upcoming women's soccer tournament. Speaking of first ever seasons, first ever full season for Brooke Wyckoff underway now as a lady leader for the women's basketball program. Florida State took down Bethune-Cookman, 11 a.m. tip-off, 113-50. to Tania Lassen with 28 points on 10 of 22 shooting. And Mikhail Timpson with 23 points. Not too shabby either. So big win for the Lady Seminoles basketball team in their opener against Bethune-Cookman. Uh, let's read a tweet before we talk about the men's basketball team. How about Trey Benson retweeting the honor that he got from the ACC as being the back of the week, retweeting it also with the graphic of Dylan Gibbons being the offensive lineman of the week for the conference, saying, wow, O-line, where y'all want to eat at? It's on me. Dylan Gibbons, wouldn't it be possible without y'all? Hashtag keep climbing. Dylan Gibbons says, sounds great, Trey. Let's eat at Syracuse on Saturday. Cohesion. Focus. Focus. Cohesion. And the basketball team, 83-74 loss to Stetson. Some dude named Luke Brown taking a break off his tour across Dixie, uh, playing his guitar, uh, drops 27? Yeah, 27 points on 7 of 11 from behind the arc. 83-74 uh, the final. Matthew Cleveland, not too bad, 6 of 11 from the field, 16 points in the losing effort for Florida State. Caleb Mills, 12 points on 5 of 11 shooting. Afterwards, Leonard Hamilton, you know, not that worried. It's the first game of the season. These things these things happen. Uh, but kind of points to the fact about the inexperience. Maybe some of these guys are standing on the shoulders of those who have come before them. I mean, listen, they've been on a heck of a run at Florida State when it comes to basketball. And uh, right now, they do have a lot of young pieces they're trying to get configured into the right sort of mix. I mean, when Caleb Mills and Cameron Fletcher are kind of like your your older statesmen and uh, they shoot a combined 8 of 20, not a good winning combination. Although Cameron Fletcher apparently is playing with a, with a lower back injury. He hasn't even been able to practice. He's just walked through everything. They're just saving up for the games. So we'll see if that's one of those things where he can kind of get healthier as the season wears on. Florida State will take on UCF, though, uh, coming up this weekend. Just one of those games where very – inexplicable for Florida State, things that we're not used to seeing, not accustomed to seeing from them. Uh, Hamilton uh, kind of lamented the fact that the, they are a good free-throw shooting team despite the fact they didn't show that uh, because they didn't. They shot 52% from the stripe, 14 of 27 from the line. Uh, rebounding, though, was really the real bugaboo for them. Uh, Out-rebounded 38 to 35, uh, just not what you're going to do against the pretty lowly, no offense Donnie Jones and the Hatters, but a fairly lowly, mid-major program no reason to panic but again a lot of new pieces being integrated did like what we saw in limited time 
out of Cameron Corn, um, or Corin, apologize, Cameron Corin. Uh, he did start and got 10 points, four or five shooting. Maybe he's the piece that can kind of emerge as a freshman and kind of grow up. But again, hey man, it's it's college basketball. No one's really ever old or senior laden. We'll, we'll give Hamilton the benefit of the doubt. They'll figure this thing out. I rambled. That was probably way longer than three minutes. We are done, though. We'll be back out at practice bright and early Tuesday morning. Probably we'll have footage of practice, those first two periods, which are just great, which are just great. Uh, we'll have a program for you folks as well. Wake up or chant. We don't know if we'll do the live show Wednesday or Thursday. Sounds like Thursday probably, but we'll have also, you know, Renegade Express later on in the week. If you didn't listen to the In the Coop show, go back, check it out. The replay is available on YouTube. Two things I did not know. According to Robert Cooper, apparently nobody cut any sod after the Miami game. The Miami game was not a sod game. This, according to Robert, sounded like he kind of knew what was going on. I'm very surprised. Also, this brand new locker room the Florida State football team has, apparently there's no seminal head logo in the middle of it. If you're a former player listening to this, you know that back in the day there was a seminal head logo right in the middle of the locker room with like a velvet rope around it. And when there wasn't a velvet rope around it, everybody knew not to step on the logo. That logo, which I guess maybe since it's the new head, uh, we won't complain that much. But no logo. Apparently no logo. This was brought about because somebody caught during the live telecast of the actual football game between Florida State and Miami that when Robert Cooper went out to midfield as a captain for the coin toss, he kind of uh, dragged his feet and stomped on the UM logo. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I did it. What are you going to do about it? So shout out to Coop. He's the dude. That's it for Wake Up Board Champ presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. We'll be back with a whole new show Wednesday, Corey and myself. Thanks for listening. Have a great one, everybody.